Well, it smells, it gets in the way, and it's all over the shoreline, and it seems to be getting worse. What is causing all of this seaweed on our beaches? Well, let's find out. Here's NBC6. First alert meteorologist Angie Lastman to explain. Yeah, guys, a little bit of seaweed is nothing new on our beaches, but these increasing amounts are. Researchers know the cause and they know the problems it brings, but finding a sustainable solution is a much harder task. South Florida has a seaweed problem. This is sargassum, and it's everywhere. Sargassum is a brown seaweed that uh, calls home the Sargasso Sea, the central gyre of the North Atlantic Ocean, that provides habitat to over 100 species of fishes and over 100 species of invertebrates. But when it comes ashore in excessive amounts, it becomes problematic. FAU's Dr. Brian LaPointe has been studying the Great Atlantic Sargassum Belt for decades. That's a 5,500 mile stretch from the Gulf of Mexico to West Africa, home to more than 20 million tons of this floating seaweed. What exactly is causing the overgrowth of sargassum that we see washing up on our shores more so than we did um, 10, 15 years ago? We have all heard about our carbon footprint, the CO2, and its relationship to climate change. What you don't hear so much about is the human nitrogen footprint. And that nitrogen footprint traces to thousands of miles away, to the Amazon rainforest. Every minute, an area the size of one and a half soccer fields is being deforested. That is being replaced with some type of agriculture, cattle farming, and increasing use of fertilizers. Plants need nitrogen in large amounts to grow, and fertilizers are a buffet of it. Much of that fertilizer then seeps into the Amazon River when it rains. And the other thing is, of course, the earth is warmed up, the seas are warmed up, and the warmer the water, the better the seaweed grows. We've never seen anything like it. One of the big problems is gonna be tourism. People don't like it, it stinks. The potential economic consequences for South Florida and its beaches are very real. They don't have to look very far for proof. And they've already seen this problem in the, in the Caribbean where some islands are just covered with their beaches and why would you go there? What do we do with all of this that's washing up on our shores? Is there anything that can be done with it? We need to do a better job as housekeepers in Florida and begin focusing more, treating our wastewater. That's going to take decades to improve our nitrogen footprint. This is the new normal that we're going to have to adapt to excessive amounts of sargassum coming in along our beaches. The pattern is pretty clear. Now what you're smelling when you're out at the beach is the sargassum releasing hydrogen sulfide as it rots, which is toxic. Mexico deals with their seaweed problem a little bit differently. They harvest it offshore, but here in Florida, that's illegal because of sargassum's protected status. Cities and counties are scrambling to find the budgets to combat what will be a growing problem. If you want to see more on this sargassum invasion, visit NBC6.com. Live in the studio, Angie Lastman, NBC6 News.